I'm so glad you guys are here at the Beyond Cinema Studios. We've got Scott, Mackenzie, Chris, and Josh. Um, well, two things. First off, I'm so glad you finally made a movie. I've been waiting for the third borderline guy to come out with a movie. And secondly, thank you for being so brave, too. Um, I think everyone that saw it at its uh, debut yesterday at Library Center uh, will agree with me. It was so visceral and so brave, so thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I read that you had been working a few years ago on a different project, a different script, and then you were encouraged to explore something a little bit more personal. So what was that encouragement, and why did you choose to write about something that is so true to you? Um, I, I, I started working on something else, and uh, it was similar to me, or to something I wanted to explore, and it allowed me to go further and was encouraged to explore the relationship with my mother. You know, obviously it's a movie. I have a sister who was there, and I have great aunts, you know, who, who were there. My mother had a great support system and friends, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, it it's, comes from a personal place, but it's also right. a movie. You know? mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, working through something like this, of course, is cathartic. I'm sure not just for you, Josh, but for everybody else. Of course, you were saying earlier, everyone has dealt with trauma, but... There, but the film, you walk away and you go, it's not just about watching all of you have a cathartic experience. There's a point to it. So for you as a filmmaker, what was the point of making this film? And for you guys coming on board, um, you know, what was your sort of goal with something like this? Um, it was to understand. Mm -hmm. That's really what it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, what I was talking to you before a little bit, you know, the, like the themes in this film are extremely universal, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's... so. Theme-wise, it's not like we're telling anything new, but what we're telling is this specific story mm -hmm. and how this specific person goes through, goes through that. So I think the goal, for not to speak for you, but for Josh and all of us, is to um, is to be just be as honest as possible through mm -hmm. that, you know, in, in that kind of experience. And then I, I think hopefully that's what makes you relate to it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's 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 in the film. There's all it's all the specific moments that people kind of remember and, and grab onto. They're like, oh, I know that, you know, mm -hmm. I know that hospital, I know that room, I know I know what that's going mm -hmm. through. That process is like yeah. yeah what about for you guys well for me it's just you know I'm always looking for something human mm -hmm. and, and the script is very human and then meeting Josh and, and Chris and really good dudes mm -hmm. so like for me I was just I'm always in the business of making human authentic real stuff you know what mm -hmm. I mean? that people can connect with and then take something from it and apply it to their life I do that with music and mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful thing I can do that with the films too mm-hmm Go ahead. <laughs> You've been through no trauma in your life at all. I, I don't know pain, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think kind of jumping off, well, backing off of what he said, I mean, after watching it for the first time yesterday, it is the specificity of moments, um, like what Cynthia was just can't speak. Oh my gosh, yeah. So to me, it's, yeah, it's about how specific that, that experience is. No, totally. Yeah, what you're saying is it's basically like the specific things that is universal. Like people going through it can understand. Mm -hmm. The specificity of it. Because mm -hmm. definitely we, we've all been in the hospital mm -hmm. having to get something that we need and taking forever or mm -hmm. having to go get meds and then not be able to have the money and need the meds and stuff. But that part wasn't in there. Yeah, but it was a scene. You know, you might be yeah, no, go ahead. It was a scene in which James goes to get the meds and doesn't have the money. Uh, or either he, he can't get the insurance. Yeah, no, they, he couldn't get yeah. the refills. Oh, we've been like, there, haven't yeah, we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like an yeah. error by the insurance company. Or, but there's also, like, you know, just the other stuff besides cancer. It's like being a kid and, yeah. you know, the relationship with your mother mm -hmm. and being irresponsible and getting away with stuff and, you know, and, and just the relationship between them. Mm -hmm. Well, what I love about the film, too, is there's sort of two things running parallel. There's the tragedy, but then there's also the beauty. Um... And the moment when, I don't, I mean, I've never done acid, now everybody knows, I've never done acid, but when you show up and you've got the clown face on and you guys are like in the shop looking at the shoes, I was like, acid looks great, I won't ever try it. But, you know, but there are like moments of like happiness. So for you as a director, how did you make those two things run parallel? I know that, I'm supposed to ask you how to pronounce the DP, his name. Matthias. Ma Matthias. 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 Okay. How did you work with him so. to create that visual language and make sure that those two things were running parallel the whole film? Uh, he's my brother. Like mm -hmm. he came out. Um, he worked with my partner Sean 
on a mini series called Southcliffe. Okay. And I know his work because I saw Miss Bala, and he's he's got such a big heart. And uh, he came over from Hungary a month before the film, and just like worked through the script with me, even like improving the script, simplifying the script, like working on scenes in the writing, mm -hmm. but discussing. Um, you know what those scenes were about and we mm -hmm. outlined it based on beats and mm -hmm. then you know got to a place of like him understanding you know, my energy and like what New York is to me and how it feels claustrophobic he's extremely involved like mm -hmm. you know in the process. everybody has been mm -hmm. everybody well Chris you were saying at the Q&A yeah. yesterday um, that there'd be moments when the camera is so close to you that you would touch him and tap him and kind of work with him that sounds so unique to me yeah that was I mean that specific thing was a little bit more just for the beginning uh, mm -hmm. the beginning part of the film when he's in the, in the club right. and stuff that that specific little dance that we did was more for mm -hmm. that but you know um but I think we shot that first, or was that one of the first? The first that, that was the first thing we shot. So with that, it kind of then, it, it eased me into um, uh, get, getting used to having a camera really close to mm -hmm. my face because that I mean that I really I really love that kind of experience. I mean normally I think as an actor I would be kind of like uh, annoyed at it, but with, with Matias and the way the way we talked about it, 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 it was kind of a it felt like an experiment in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, he would he would push me. I would. You know, he would like, he would be grabbing my shirt underneath the camera if we're you know, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of a I felt like a little art art piece or mm -hmm. something you know, <laughs> performance art yeah. Well, I love the scene in the hotel because um, some of it's a continuous shot, um, and I was reading that you were saying that you guys shot that late in the day and everyone was sort of exhausted, and we hear a lot about directors pushing actors. And for you, working on a script that is so difficult, mm -hmm. um, how do you balance protecting these guys, but then also pushing them? I, I, I try and, and be sensitive to their own feelings and like, their comfort levels on set as much as I can, but then I also have like what I want, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. <laughs> and trying to articulate that differently to each person and finding out how they work and knowing what to expect and where it's gonna go. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of was organic. Well, you know them yeah, well, well too. Like, we became friends. You mm -hmm. know, I, sh I I share everything. I'm like, everything's on my sleeve, right. and uh, I try and let them in, and they let me in, mm -hmm. and then we're friends, and then we just mm -hmm. treat each other. Like Open door policy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think I, I joined on to be pushed from challenge. Yeah, I was gonna say you the know, same so thing. Like, yeah. I, I was never. Yeah, I was never like, you know, if, if anything, I wanted to know what he thought and. I wanted to try different things. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like collaborative like that because he is the director and I want to give him what he wants. But like sometimes we just talk about shit. Yeah. And, and to me, that's rare. And, and, and the most beautiful moments happen, you get the best product where the director can be like, let me kind of like have him do something I want and then let's try and see if he can add a little something of his own shit and to see what comes out of that. You know? mm -hmm. um, that was dope, man. And I, and, and I really like... I know a lot of actors don't really like that, but sometimes they come on set and they have their idea how they want to do right. it, they made their choices, and they don't really want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think for me, that's all about the learning process, and, and I'm still learning. You know, yeah. there's mm -hmm. a lot that I've learned on every film set I've been on, and, 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 and from Chris and, and, and Josh, just every day I was just learning stuff. Mm -hmm. technique or, or something, you know? Mm -hmm. It's nice when the barrier is gone from, like, behind the camera to the people in front of the yeah. camera. Because sometimes you do jobs and you feel like you're the people on this side and the people there. And, like, yeah. you, do, you do a scene and then, like, everyone's over there and, like, you feel like you're just waiting and people are talking for, like, three minutes and, like, what, the, like, what are they saying? Yeah. Like, like, that, like, that was just terrible. Like, I just went, you know? You're yeah, just, like, you're not a part of the club. <laughs> yeah, so you're not totally. part of the... So, you know, and this, and this, was, this was the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm sure you guys did a lot of homework ahead of time, especially because because you and Chris have been friends for years, and once you decided him to come on board, you guys talked about this character, but it, it feels so visceral, and when you watch these performances, you're reminded, I think Cynthia said this, that everyone's an animal, because when you're, in, when you're sick or you're taking care of someone sick, it's just about surviving. And I can't help but think that that affects you guys on a physical level as actors. So apart from your work you did with Josh, what did you do personally, especially you, Chris, to prep for something this taxing and this visceral? Drank a lot. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Wasted every day. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, well, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I was around, um, yeah. you know, uh, during the time that, that uh, Josh's mother passed away. And um, it's, it's, it's not like the preparing, the preparing was more technical. And the, and, okay. the, and, the, and the stuff, 
the the I guess the emotion the stuff on the emotional levels is, you know, it's uh, I just I, I know Josh, you know, pretty well, and and we we have a pretty open r rapport with each other, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't I. I I guess I mentally prepared, but it was probably something a little bit more subconscious than than me. Like it wasn't like a, s a studious thing, you, you know. Right. I knew. I knew. I knew once we started filming, the, uh, doing the film, that um, it, it would all just uh, everything from all the years past would just kind of come and flood into this. You just have flood. to breathe. You just have to breathe, and you just gotta let it. I mean, that's the thing. I don't. I don't like to think too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I don't like to think too much while I'm doing. You just know as much as you can know and then kind of try and forget it and then just trust that it's in there. Totally. You know? Okay, last question. This is kind of a fun question. Okay. I think it's fun. So, uh, you shot this in New York. Yeah. And Borderline Films is in New York. Um, is there anywhere else you want to shoot? Like, is there, and if you could shoot anywhere, any location, budget, you know, I give you a billion dollars, where would you want to shoot? All across Europe and Asia. Okay. For one thing. Mm-hmm. Is there a, a bigger budget. <laughs> yeah. A billion dollars. I'm saying any budget. In terms of oh, money? I said billion. Just oh, to specify. Oh, a billion dollars. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you I'll can do whatever you want. All over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna shoot on the pyramids for one movie. Yeah. I'll see that movie. I'll be first in line. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you.